Decimal, base 10. Assuming you've heard of numbers before, you probably know about the decimal system, also known as base 10. It involves 10 digits that can be put together to represent a number. For example, consider the number 243. That's two groups of 100, four groups of 10, and three groups of one. So the total is two times 100 plus four times 10 plus three times one equals 243. Each place value is based on a certain power of 10. For instance, 100 is 10 squared, which is the result of multiplying two tens together. Similarly, 10 is 10 to the first power, and 1 is 10 to the zeroth power. That last one is the result of multiplying no tens together, which is called the empty product, which is equal to 1. Since multiplying something by 1 is the same as not multiplying at all. The decimal system can also represent non-whole amounts using a decimal point. For example, 2.5 is 2 times 1 plus 5 times 0 0.1 or just 2 times 10 to the power of 0, plus 5 times 10 to the power of negative 1. The decimal system with the digits we have today is called the Hindu Arabic numeral system. It originates from Indian mathematicians sometime between the 1st and 4th centuries, though not including fractions, which were a later extension by 9th century Arabian mathematicians. In modern times, the system is the standard worldwide system of number representation. Obviously, the choice of 10 as a base is rather arbitrary, primarily occurring because most humans have 10 digits on their hands. Though many other bases exist, base 10 remains the dominant one. Roman numerals. If you want to represent numbers in a fancy way, then Roman numerals are one way to do it. The system uses letters to represent numbers, with these values for each letter. I equals 1, V equals 5, X equals 10, L equals 50, C equals 100, D equals 500, and M equals 1000. However, while you might think you can just keep adding together these letters until you get to the value you want, the reality is a bit more complicated. This is true for a number like 35, which is just XXXV. However, let's say we want to represent the number 49. This can be broken up as 40 plus 9, and each part will be considered separately. We could represent 40 with a chain of 4 x's, but the standard is to use an alternative notation that saves on symbol usage. This is known as subtractive notation, where a smaller numeral is placed before a larger one to indicate subtracting the first from the second. In our case, we would write XL. X is 10 and L is 50, so this means 10 less than 50, or 40. Similarly, 9 is 1 less than 10, so it's represented by IX. Putting it together, we can write 49 as XLIX. Note that we wouldn't write 49 as IL with subtractive notation. We have to break it up as 40 plus 9 first. The largest number representable by the system is 3,999, shown here. 3,000 is MMM, 900 is CM, 90 is XC, and 9 is IX. Roman numerals were used in ancient Rome, but there are many mysteries regarding the nature of their origin, particularly because we have found very few examples from that time. They may have originated from a similar number system called Etruscan numerals, named after the Etruscans, who lived in the same area. As Roman numerals developed, there were many conflicting conventions regarding its usage. For example, 4 could be IIII or IV. The version shown here is the standardized version used today. Binary, base 2. Binary will be familiar to fans of computer science, since it's what computers use to represent numbers. It's also called base 2 due to having just two digits, 0 and 1. Like decimal, binary is a positional numeral system. Each digit's value depends on its position. However, binary uses powers of 2, not 10. For example, consider the binary number 1110 base 2. We'll write a subscript 2 to remind us of the base. The first digit is 3 places left from the 1's place, so that's 1 times quantity 2 cubed, 
which is 8. Then the next one is two places left, so that's 1 times quantity 2 squared, or 4. Repeating for the next two digits, the values are 2 and 0. 8 plus 4 plus 2 is 14, so the binary number 1110 is the decimal number 14. Binary is particularly useful for computer representations, since computers store information using bits. A bit is the most basic unit of information, having only one of two possible values. These values can be represented by 1 and 0, on and off, true and false, etc. The name bit itself is short for binary digit. Bits are the basic building block of computer data. Everything stored in a computer's memory can basically be boiled down to zeros and ones. A related unit is a byte, which consists of eight bits. It can store any whole number from zero to 255, so it has 256 possible states altogether. Another base common in computer science is hexadecimal, which is base 16. This system uses our usual digits 0 through 9, along with the alphabetical letters A through F. Since 16 is a power of 2, namely 2 to the power of 4, hexadecimal relates nicely with binary, with the added benefit of faster writing. One common use of hexadecimal is representing colors with a color code. You've probably seen this if you've used a color picker before. Golden Ratio Base so far we've only looked at integer bases, however in the spirit of mathematics we can try seeing what happens when we generalize our bases to other numbers. One option is to try using irrational numbers, like pi, e, tau, gamma, and so on. Unfortunately, these number systems tend to be very chaotic and strange, making it difficult to use them to represent numbers. However, one special exception is a number called the golden ratio. To obtain it, imagine having two amounts, A and B, where A is larger than B. A and B are two parts of a whole, where the whole is A plus B. If the ratio of the whole to the larger part equals the ratio of the larger part to the smaller part, that is, if quantity A plus B over A equals A over B, then that ratio is called the golden ratio. This is a number denoted by the Greek letter phi, equal to quantity 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and approximately 1.618. So, what does it mean to have a number in base phi? Phi is not the number of digits in our system, since you can't have phi digits. However, a positional numeral system can be defined by the specific number which is raised to a given power for each base and multiplied by the digit at that position. For example, this number is 10 for base 10, and 2 for base 2. Applying that same logic here, the number that will be exponentiated and multiplied by the given digit will be phi in base phi. Our system will use two digits, 0 and 1. However, whenever we get a digit sequence of 11, we will try to rewrite the number to get rid of it. Let's try to represent some numbers in this system. The numbers 0 and 1 are easy enough. They still look like 0 and 1. However, the number 2 is where difficulty begins. Luckily, we can make use of some of the algebraic properties of the golden ratio to solve this. To begin, we know that the golden ratio is defined by this equality. We can do some algebra to obtain the following. Now, we'll take this last equality and divide both sides by phi squared. Then, we add 1 to both sides and rewrite terms as powers of phi. At this point, we could write the number as 1.11 base phi in base phi, but this includes the digit sequence 11, which we want to avoid. To convert it to standard form, we can remember that phi equals 1 plus 1 over phi, as shown earlier. Therefore, the standard form of this number in base phi is 10.01 base phi, with the digit 1 in positions 1 and negative 2. In a similar way, every non-negative integer has a unique base phi expansion that doesn't go on forever. That is, it terminates. But what if we allow for non-terminating expansions? For instance, let's consider the base phi number 0 0.10101 repeating base phi. This can be represented with an infinite sum, or series. 
The value of a series is the limit of its partial sums, that being 1 in this case. Therefore, both this representation and 1 base phi are valid ways to represent the number 1. It's similar to how 0 0.333 repeating can be represented by the following infinite sum. Although the partial sums of this series in and of themselves will never be exactly equal to one third, they will get closer and closer, to within an arbitrarily small distance of the target number. Therefore, the limit of the partial sums is one third, which is the value that 0 0.333 repeating represents. Similar logic can be used to show that 0 0.999 repeating equals one, as long as you know how an infinite sum works.